new year and I'm already starting off with a better habits with asset security and management in 2023 than I ever did in 2022. Ooh, do tell, because I feel like every time I connect my wallet to, especially my cold wallet to a website, I need to take a deep breath and hold it to make yes. sense what's going to happen. We don't know. Yeah. So today I definitely want to show you how to set up subdomains and then also generate new wallet addresses so you can safe and securely move your assets. That sounds phenomenal. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hello and welcome back. If you're new here, we put out content on NFTs, digital art, Web3 products, anything in that space. So please be sure to like and subscribe. For today's video, we have a little bit of a different format. We're going to be doing an actual demo on securing your digital assets. And what prompted this whole thing it was a huge security issue within LastPass, which is the password manager that I have been using up until this point. Let's take a look back at the conversation Lux and I had surrounding this. password manager. So I'm sitting there with my family the day before Christmas, just manually resetting as many passwords as possible. I'm doing it based on order of priority, of course. Yeah. And I don't even search for seed phrases or anything like that because I'm not an idiot and why why would I ever do that? Why would I put that in a password manager? Fast forward to the next day and I'm looking again and I'm like, holy I had a seed phrase in my password manager. The one thing you should never, ever, ever, ever do is input your seed phrase anywhere. We all know this. If you don't know this, you should know this. I should have known better. I don't know at what point I put that seed phrase into my password manager, but basically that means that whole wallet, everything associated with that seed phrase has been compromised. And so yep. I went through an entire security audit at the end of last year, which is why I wanted to talk about like security and scans this year. So that said, let's get into it. All right. So to kick things off, Triple Farmer has this amazing tweet thread that really tells you everything that you need to know to do this. So the first thing is what we're doing is we're segregating your wallets and moving your digital assets around. First thing that he says is to get a hardware wallet, 100%. And that's what we're going to be working with today. So I've got some hardware wallets here. I do not typically keep them all together. This is because my studio is my home. But we have a ledger. We have my deprecated ledger. So this is the wallet that has been compromised. So this is no longer of use to me. And then we have a treasure here as well. I'm going to go ahead and get my ledger all plugged in and set up. And while I'm doing this, we'll move into the next part of Tropo's thread here. So basically to create a separate wallet, it's very easy in MetaMask. We're going to do this in just a second. But the other important thing to go through in Trobo's thread here is how he's structured and organized his wallets. So for you, I would encourage you to really think through the assets that you have. How do you want to secure them? How often will you be interacting with them? And that will educate your process in terms of how you want to set up your wallets. So what he's done is he's created a few different wallets here that you can see numbered. General purpose, which are things that he just wants to eventually move into a vault or potentially sell. The mint wallet here, like he says, it's your total DGEN wallet. So this is a wallet that you're going to want to set up strictly to mint projects and interact with contracts. You're not going to use this wallet to connect with anything else. You're not going to keep assets in here. You're either going to move them to like a general purpose or move them into their own wallet or a vault somewhere else. But this wallet is strictly used to interact with contracts. So that way, if you interact with a malicious contract, you don't have a ton of assets in this mint wallet that could potentially be stripped from you. Do not keep a high value of tokens in here either, because again, if you do interact with the malicious contract, everything that is in this mint wallet is that potential to be compromised. Another wallet that he has set up here is a marketplace wallet. So this is the wallet that he would use to interact with buying and selling things on secondary. Then he goes into vault, so grails, total cold wallet, bank vault, mobile, yada. But since we're gonna be doing a combination of creating the wallets like through MetaMask and then also using subdomains and ENS, let's take it a little bit further and explain these a bit. So here's a little kind of flow chart, schematic, whatever. 
of how I would recommend setting up your subdomains and using ENS. So for this example, I have a an ENS that's assigned to a wallet called learnwhileyouburn.eth. So we have the first four and the last four of the wallet address right here. So this is the main domain that I'm going to be using. And then you'll quickly see, and we'll take a look at this again once we've gone through some of these things, that here is a mint wallet that I'm gonna set up as a subdomain, a potential vault as a subdomain, and then like a grail subdomain. So you see that when you create a subdomain, it is dot whatever that domain address dot e. And then you'll also see if you're looking closely that the first four and last four of these subdomains actually have a different wallet address as well. And so this is when we're gonna set up and we're gonna structure and we're gonna focus on creating this mint subdomain. So I can see on ENS here, and we have done a video on ENS before. So if you're unfamiliar with ENS, we'll link to that below. For this particular demo, we are going to make a few updates before we get started. So this is an ETH address that I had previously owned. I had just moved it over to this burner address that I had created. And we see that it's the OXEF AO1C, um, A0 Wonder. So the registrant here is the wallet that I'd use to actually purchase this domain. And right now, this domain name is pointing to that same address. I haven't updated that yet because I thought that we could do that together. So what this means is when I go to my account here, confirming that I am connected to the right wallet, we'll see that there's no names actually associated to this address if this loads. Okay, cool. And so we see because this account is not this ETH address is not the registrant for this ENS. It doesn't actually show up as owning any sort of domains. And there's also no ENS or ETH address associated to this wallet address. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to update that right. I'm going to go back to that view that I was in previously. And you can get to that just by searching the ENS name. So I could put in up in the top here, learn while you burn.eth to get this information back. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and update the record to point it to the right Ethereum address. So we're gonna do that in this section right here by just hitting add and edit record. And then I'm gonna go ahead and this controller is the address that I wanna use. I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna go ahead and paste it right on in here. So you need to scroll all the way down to the bottom here to commit the save. It can be confusing, but all of these inputs down in this field Update as many of those as you want and do them at the same time so that you're only paying gas fee on a singular transaction. This is the only thing that I'm gonna update in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click confirm. And it's gonna ask me to verify that this is in fact what I wanna do. This is the right address. I'm verifying again and I'm gonna hit confirm. And when I do that, MetaMask is gonna open here. That's a way more in gas that I wanna pay, but I'm gonna do it so we can keep moving. And I'm going to go ahead and verify everything on my ledger. I do have a verifier set up, so this is going to take a few clicks. So sorry. Reviewing transaction, checking my address, double checking those fees, and I'm going to go ahead and accept and send. And now we see on the screen here that the tax is pending. This changes in the process of being made. So let's give it a second here. Do 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 do. All right, so that just finished up and we see now that my Ethereum address associated to this ENS is the A01C, which matches the controller. All right, so if I wanted to change the registrant on this account so that it shows up when I hit my account, I need to connect to this wallet address here to make that change. So we can go ahead and do that, I believe. All right, so now I'm connected to this B6D4, which is the registrant for this learn while you burn. I'm connected to that address. I need to disconnect here. I'm gonna connect MetaMask B464. All right, so now I have the ability to transfer the registrant on this account. I'm gonna, let's just do it for the sake of the demo. The same address I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna paste it right up in here and I'm gonna go ahead and click transfer. So again, this is gonna be another gas fee because I'm committing a change. I'm gonna approve this in my ledger here. Okay. And we see that the tax is pending. Let's give it a second and another second and another second. Let's go blockchain, commit those changes. Okay, cool. So we have now changed the registrant for this ENS name to the new burner wall that we had created, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect here. And I am going to switch back to the correct wallet that I was using via MetaMask. 
which is test burner. I need to reconnect my wallet here because I disconnected the last one and now we're totally connected. So now if I go to my account, we should see learn while you burn, which we do, which is great. So now that we've updated the registrant to this wallet address, we see that this ENS name shows up on this account. So what this means now is if I want to go, I don't know, <laughs> take a look on OpenSea to look at my ENS name there, I can now. So if I just go to OpenSea and then just the backslash and then the wallet address, we will see that this account now has this learn while you burn ETH in it. All right, so this is the primary wallet that we're going to set up our subdomains with. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this and it takes us back into the details page here. I can't register because obviously this name is already registered. So that would be an option if I searched and it was available, I could do that whole thing. Details that we came from, subdomains. There are no subdomains currently, but that's what we're here to do. So we're gonna add a subdomain. Obviously click that button. The name, it's just gonna be mint. That's all I want. And I'm gonna click save. Weird, another gas transaction. 215. I'm going to hit. I don't think there's much money in this wallet. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to approve that through MetaMask. And now it's kicked out to my ledger. And I'm going to take a look skis here and approve this bad boy. Okay. Accept and send. Transaction is pending. All right. Okay, cool. So we have created our first subdomain, mint.learnwhileyouburn.e. So if I click on this, I'll get to another detail page. We see that the controller is that initial wallet that learn while you burn ETH that set up. And then I do have the ability to set an ETH address here. So this ETH address we are going to input is going to be from what we create out of the wallet. So let's skip to doing that right now. So we're gonna go to MetaMask now and create a wallet address to input into the address field here for the subdomain so we can start to create our Mint wallet. So if I go to MetaMask and I am going to connect a hardware wallet, it's gonna be my ledger I'm using a Nano X. Okay. So these are accounts that have already been created on this ledger. I don't have the option to open one of those up. I'm going to connect to get to the next page. It's a weird UX thing. Options on this page. This number nine that's selected is the address that I opened up that is associated to the learn while you burn. So let's go ahead and use number eight for the mint subdomain. So I'm going to go ahead and click to unlock this. And now we have created a new wallet address and it's just it was associated to ledger i'm basically unlocking it and then i'm going to go ahead and rename this so that i don't just have a bunch of obscure names and don't know what the heck they are i don't know what all these errors mean they always show up for me everything works fine though so this is going to be mint earn earn wallet i'm going to get rid of all this anyway but i basically just have this as mint wallet or vault wallet and keep everything with that main domain in a singular ledger. So I'm gonna go ahead and commit that. And now we have this mint learn, we're OX2A and then BFC6. So I'm gonna, again, just copy that address. We have a new wallet that we can use when I go into my MetaMask here. I can now see it in my list of accessible wallets. So if I go into this mint learn while you burn, I'm gonna go ahead and edit this record. I'm all right, so we've input the address for the new wallet that we've created, and I'm gonna go ahead and click confirm, and I'm gonna confirm this. And I'm gonna go pay that outrageous gas fee. And now I'm on my wallet, my ledger, approving these. This, sorry. Max fees, accept and send, alrighty. All right, it's happening, the transaction is pending. Great. All right. So that is now done. So if we go back to learn while you burn, we see our details here. We go to our subdomains. We now have the mint learn while you burn subdomain. It has its own wallet address associated to it. Super easy to create. So obviously you just hit add, sub add subdomain and input the title, the word, whatever. 
We used Mint to create a Mint wallet, and then we went through MetaMask to generate that new wallet address that we input here. So now this, this wallet is all set up to receive and be used as your Mint wallet with this address associated to it. Yeah, that's true. We certainly appreciate you guys sticking around with us and yes. hanging out on our weird little corner of the internet being DGENs. Be sure to like and subscribe and definitely share the channel around if you're enjoying this content. That's it. That's all we got. Send us some Bitcoin. Thanks. Bye. Bye.